It is time to fire the Measurement 109A3. It's also called the Meal Fever Heard That Term thrown around. Reason why I picked this aircraft to fly is I actually love this aircraft. I don't know why. I hated the 109s when I first started flying them, but this one has grown a special place in my heart. One thing to note was the difference between E1 to the E3. Primarily is these 20mm cannons on the wings here. These are MGFFs. The MGFF is a licensed copy of the Swiss Orlokan FF, which is also the basis to the Hispano, and then the Americans copied the Hispano, and then blah blah blah. So the Orlokan FF got around town in World War II, you could say. These guns for the Germans did use the 60 round magazine, so that's why you see this big hump to make room for the receiver in the magazines down there. And you had limited ammunition, which is why they eventually switched to the belt fed in things like the MG151, which is a more superior cannon. But this works for early tiers. This gives you a leg up on most of the other planes that you might see. So let's take this to battle, and I will talk more about it real quickly, though. You will see this plane if you don't recognize it because of the camo. It is synonymous with the Battle of Britain with this big canary yellow nose right there. But I like to fly it with uh, this camouflage here. Because I have to be different. I just have to be. It's in my blood. Alright, let's get to battle. I will tell you that I think that this is one of the best planes for a beginning player to learn on. Especially if you want to go the German boom zoom tactics. You know, there's other planes like the boomerang, which I suggested if you want to learn how to defensive fly and churn fight. This is a plane that if you want to learn how to be a high altitude, you know, dive down, strike, and then go back up, this is a great early tier plane to use those skills on. It outperforms a lot of things. Matchmaker has to be a little bit on your side. It generally sees things like P40 Kitty Hawks, Big 3s, Yak 7s, Yak 1s. Nothing too extreme, but sometimes you, uh, you'll see Hellcats. And that's a hard pill to swallow. Let's get up in the air here. I do not wep. This plane can wep. The problem is, though, is I don't play Germany enough to keep track of it from patch to patch. There's something in the game called Thermodynamics, and that controls how much engines heat up and... I won't get into that huge build, but that seems to change every patch, especially for the German flight model, so I typically like to keep the engine 100%. I keep an eye on the temperature gauge, and I do not use WEP until I need to either escape or I need to chase down somebody. Now, that being said about throttle control, I always climb at a 15 to 20 degree angle displaying straight in. It over, not saying overperforms, it outperforms most things at this tier and climb rate. For the 20 millimeters right there, I use air target ammo, and then for the 7.7s in the nose, I choose to switch the uh, tracers. A lot of players in the 109s will use tracers on the nose for the MGs, and then they'll use cannons and stealth, and they'll use the tracers to guide in the cannon rounds. That'll get you more stopping power, you could say, and more kills per round. But if you can't make those rounds hit, then it's useless. So I choose to use tracers because I need to know where the arc of those things are. This is me personally. This is something to keep in mind and experiment with. One quick thing to know about the 109s in case some of those who out there who are not too familiar with this plane, it has something called leading edge flats. Which as you see as I sit there and I kind of pull my nose up, see that wing flutter back and forth? That's called leading edge slat. That is so that the plane can mix the wing area bigger so that the plane has more lift so you can fly at lower speeds. Measure Smith was a pretty uh, nifty guy. And I don't have history in front of me, but I believe the leading edge slat was designed on another plane. I can't remember what country, but the 109s have it. And a few other planes have it in game as well. So, back to point. I always liked the E3. I started the game, I, was, I went straight to the F4 because I like the, you know, you have the choice of the cannon pods and there's this more firepower and more ammo, and I thought this is a great plane. I really think you should spend some time in the E3, especially if you want to go for the things like the G6, the G10, the G2, the K4, Doras, um, you know, anything that involves high altitude, booming and zooming. This is a great plane that you can learn on that is very forgiving. And also the enemies at this tier are usually very forgiving, so just something to keep in mind. Like I said, the E1 and the 190A1, uh, stuff like that that does not have ton of cannons or any cannons at all I, I try to stay away from. 
Uh, side note, the BF-110 is probably the other good plane for a beginner to fly in Germany to get through those early tiers. Which I will probably feature at some point in the future. So... We are getting up here and I want to start scanning for dots about now. I do have the Stukas down low and the HE-111. 109's behind me. JU-88, way over there. Jeez, where's that guy going? Expecting to see MiG 3s, Yak 7s, Yak 1s, maybe an Aero Cobra 2. Hopefully, nothing else too much more extreme than that. The Russians, one thing about this game though, you need to know your opponents, and the Russians, I do not want to go low altitude with Yaks. Uh, I want to keep them up high, and I want to do hit run tactics. I know that I outperform them, especially in the vertical, and I want to use that. To my advantage, if I go on the deck with them, I know that the GAC is going to outturn this plane. I don't, I mean, you're a good pilot, you can probably dodge two or three attacks, but eventually you're just going to get worn down, you can lose that airspeed, and they will eventually kill you. So, knowing that your enemy is half the battle. Now let's keep a look out here. There's a dot right there, I'm going to head towards that. There's probably some more behind him. What is that? That looks kind of big to me. I can put to 10 degrees, so I'm going fast, but I'm also still climbing. I don't think he's alone. I got a bad feeling about this to go here some forward. Could be a bomber. Chico just crashed. Well, let's go fly over here and check it out. I don't see anything else in the horizon up here. Oh, we got a uh, buddy following him. Maybe a couple more pop out of the clouds. IL-4. Ooh, I'm going to feel bad about this. MiG-3. Okay. I'm not going to feel so bad about this. So the IL-4 is the easy kill, but there's a MiG-3 right behind him. If I was to dive on that IL-4, I still have a MiG-3 in my tail. I'm going to eliminate the fighter first, and he'll let some of those guys behind me go for the IL-4, or maybe I'll have an all-I-can-eat buffet over here. Only five way out there. I'm not too concerned about him. This pick three doesn't. He's either uh, letting me get in close, or he doesn't know I'm here. Oh, he's gonna turn. I am not gonna follow in that dive. I'm actually gonna go up. I'm gonna put my airspeed to as much altitude as I can. And like I said, I am not the best boom zoomer in the world. I just kind of made up my own system here that works, that I feel comfortable with, that I have success with. Um, oh, that was good shots. Alright, I want to roll. And I'm going to get out of town. Come on, buddy. I'm on Harbun. I'm gonna drag this guy. Alright, he rolled off. I'm gonna get a little bit more separation from him before I uh, turn back on him. That's why it's always good to have somebody watching your back. I think you probably would have fired some rounds at me and I would have been able to escape, but it's always nice to have that guy just to break somebody off like that. And he's had enough like to be up 110 or something, so. Have a nice trip, Big Three. That BF-110 probably smells like a four down there. It's like catnip to them. Where did that LA-5 go? That is who I'm interested in.
Does this look anything's chasing that JU88? Oh wow, he's got two on him. Now let's go into hand. Usually when I do a big dive like this, I immediately cut the engine to zero. You don't want to drop flaps. You, that's something you could do in the past, but they'll uh, shred right off. That's a lag three down there, and I'm gonna guess that LA5 was on that. There he is, there you are. All right, easy turns. He's gonna zoom climb straight up at me. I am not interested in that shenanigans. And there's the L4. There's the MiG-3. We're all back to one big happy family. LA-5 chased me. I'm gonna let him wear down his energy a bit before I try to get back on him. If he's gonna keep chasing me, I'm gonna lead him over the sea away from his uh, comrades. Get interested in that one tent. You don't want me. Alright, let's go ahead and see if anybody will answer that call. This is a perfect dragon bag, I just need somebody to bag them. We got the dragon up set up here. And that's the that engine starting to overheat. I am not gonna take any risk with that. Here comes Talon back, excellent. The second heat breaks when Talon goes in, that's when you wanna churn and make your pass. Come on, Talon. I'm just leaving this guy. Talon doesn't seem interested. Oh, I think the LA-5 is... Yep, he's leaving Talon. That's my turn. Oh, that's an ugly churn. My nose down a bit more. Alright, so now he's on Talon. I want to dive to where he's going. He's going straight up. This guy is just... All about the head-ons. Somewhere in this cloud. There he is. Alright, let's see if we can get that nice shot. Oh, it's gonna That guy is falling right now. I have faith this little 109 is going to get its nose in front of him. Especially at some point, it's going to have to break. There is a mountain right there. I'm going to go ahead and move my combat flaps out. My low enough speed, and right. There's some hits. That's a mountain. And there's a lot of them left over there. It's like, oh, the BF-110 just crashed. One habit I've always done is every time I get in a dogfight like that and I'm blacked out and a lot of things are happening and, you know, I'm so focused on getting that deflection shot, I always like to just cycle through the flaps to make sure that they're in-raised. 
Um, because he can fly halfway across the map with having your flaps down and you're just burning airspeed for no reason. Might as well keep climbing. There should have been... Alright, let's look at the points here. That's... Those are probably fighters. That's a bomber. Don't know what that is. I'm actually going to fly towards that VF-110. See what he's got going on. A lot of flak, that's what he's got going on. Russians. Some of them probably at their airfield, but I don't want to run back over there quite yet. I hear a propeller. Completely oblivious to what's going on. And there's Talon. He's wondering where he went. I guess he's been falling the entire time. Give him a little wing wave. <laughs> uh, it's too funny. It's the world's biggest cumulus cloud. This is ridiculous. Oh, there's one. Alright, I'm going way too fast. There's no way. I-16 on the deck. That's a ton of AA. I am not messing with that stuff. Alright, let's kill the engine. Let me kind of flop over here. Try to get some of this airspeed cut. Hello, Lag 3. Yeah, miss me? What's he doing? No way it's this easy. And I'm missing. Oh, jeez. That's pretty much a store cracker for the electric tree right there. On fire, flipping around, flopping around, parts breaking off. Somehow he looks like he's still trying to be in this fight, but I don't think he's... I don't think he's all there. Let's do a little swap here. Oh, He was... I'm going to try to reclaim this. I should have given that to him. I'm a little conflicted. We'll let him get the I-16. He's been a great way, man. Oh, there's also the X-7. If I get played, we're Thunder Paranoid, kids. Alright, so I want to fly low. Oh, yep. There we go. Avoid that head on. And I'm going to drag him. I'm going to tell him I'll drag him. So I'm going to cut. There we go. Come on. Come here. Come right here. Put up some. Oh no. I I've been hit. I'm leaking red smoke. Doesn't really work. 
That's the problem with the E1, kids. That's where some 20 millimeters are usually pretty helpful. Come on, Talon. Well, that guy's getting a little close, so I'm gonna speed up. Yep, time to speed up. Oh, the BF110's like getting my belly. Alright, it's time for me to go evasive here. Just trying to set up a drag, almost get myself killed here. Kill the X7! Bait can be bait for only so long, and then it's dinner. You know, it's almost the end of the match. I have a broken wing. I'm not going to be much use, but I still want to stick around. Put the pressure on the Yak-7. I still got a few cannon rounds to fling his way. If it comes to that. Oh, hello. That is another MiG-3. I should outrun him. There we go, come on. Another dragon back. This is like the longest battle. about even with that MIG right now if whip off. That's so much AA, but... The Act 7 makes that landing. I gotta try and pick him off the hard way. It's always a gamble to do these airport runs. Dragging the MIG. The MIG's getting closer. Makes up some yo yo's. Come on, Talon. Right, we're going to do some turns here, even with the dead wing. I gotta cut my airspeed so my wingman can get a shot at him. Come on, Talon. Trust in you. Yes! Nice work. Baby bird. Oh, fire went out. It's a wooden plane. Wooden gas. Burn, Mig. Thank goodness this has been somewhat survival because I made several stupid mistakes in this game that uh, hopefully none of you ever repeat. Uh, let's see, 
ammo. I'm out of ammo. Wing badly damaged. Um, what else we got? Fuel issues. Tap on etc. There. Somewhere out there is one more plane. It's a make three. I am so badly damaged, I'm actually going to have to try and take a head on with 7.7s if he actually dives on me, because... Alright, let's, let's hope for some luck. Oh, I didn't kill him, but he didn't kill me. Oh, I got my engine. Oh, that's why you don't do head-ons with inline engine planes. Oh, I'm so full failed tonight. What? I'm sorry, E3. Let you down. Maybe I could still be bait for him and we can win this together. You know what? Oh gosh, I don't have a wing. Let's try and at least do a head on with no engine. Or a ram. Oh, he's not going to take it. He's not going to take it. No. Not the water. And we need to put more pressure on the enemy. They're winning. Personal. <laughs> Guess I got personal for that MiG-3. That's the end of the game. So, like I said, if your biggest mistake I made in this game was when you bait and when you do dragon bag for another player, keep an eye on that speed because I, I throw down too much and they act almost kill me. But like I said, E3 is a great plane to mess around. Very forgiving. Um, if you want to look at the German tree, if, you know, if you're just starting out, definitely take a good hard look at this plane. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to criticize the crap out of this showing because I don't know. It's late and I don't know where my head was at 12 p.m.